Did a demon lizard person eat your cat? It is a succubus sucking the life out of you. <laughs> Lucky you. Oink. Rita, the script. Fine. Does nobody believe when you tell them that you saw a thing that looked like a melted scrotum with teeth eat your doctor's brain and then become her? Then, person watching this video on your social media platform of choice, the algorithm has made you today's lucky winner. The veil between dimensions is thin and hell creatures are slipping into our world. But, like, don't stress. We've totally got it under control. Give us a call, and we'll help rid you of whatever infernal beast is making your life a living hell. Eighteen and older, please. I I will be participating in use of mature themes, drug use, sexual content, and some harsh g <laughs> language. Rita! What? So if a demon's got you down, give us a call at 555-420-FART. <sighs> That's not that's not our number. Don't call that. It's nothing. Previously on today's lucky winner. Yeah, I take this little whatchamabuck, which you've slapped this thing a machine onto. That's the thing that makes it so you can take El Bicho into the dreamscape. You've used that before. He's in a re-education camp in a hell dimension at the moment. The magic there should keep him from being able to do whatever he was up to. I think we can help each other out. I think we can bust out of here, and I think you can help me figure out how to stop something bad from happening. As Vicky unhinged her jaw, a swirling black hole revealed itself in the back of her throat. Okay, so Don and I have a plan to help save my dad, and I was going to ask you for an enormous favor. I'll do it! You will compile all of the information that you have on Ambrosio's dimension, and you will have your magic department provide me with a means to travel there and back. What's up, dickheads? It's your boy Chad Bravo. Boyer's back up and running, and you know I had to make some fresh shit to celebrate. Am I gonna do one of my classic pranks? Am I going to walk around with a microphone and corner females into answering my genius questions? Ha <laughs> ha! Not this time. I got tagged by at Sigma Sam to do the new hashtag old timey doctor challenge. So you know how some nose beers, you know, booger sugar, can't say the real name or voyeur will take this down, but yeah. You know how some people have been doing like a bump or rolling or something? And like, they're not sick anymore. Like how old timey doctors would give people like weed and opium and stuff if they came in for like dandruff? Yeah, so like that's the challenge. Not all blow seems to do it, so it might not work. Yeah, so at Sigma Sam did it, and his psoriasis disappeared. He tagged me, and now I'm a slam a nose beer and see if it cures my celiac disease by eating this entire fucking baguette. Let's see what happens. It didn't fucking work. I def still have celiac disease. This gluten is... <laughs> oh, God. This gluten is rearranging my guts, bros. And I... Uh, 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 <coughs> fucking bread is tearing my ass up and I... <coughs> I'm so fucking itchy. I'm gonna unalive you for this, Sigma Sam. You watch your back, bro. Because I'm gonna... <coughs> it's starting again. It's starting again. How can I still have shit in me? I'm gonna blow my whole ass. to fucking listen if this is even going to come close to working. I made sure this flowchart wasn't dick-shaped, so I don't know what you all could be laughing about this time. <laughs> now your flowchart's usually dick-shaped. <laughs> oh no, this is over-caffeinated, Dawn. Stop giggling, stop, stop giggling. It's for your own safety. <laughs> Dawn, I think you fell asleep at your desk for a little bit. 
that happens to me all the time. There's a little sticky note stuck to your boob that says, buy cock for holes. <laughs> what? Where are you? What? <laughs> Left boob. <laughs> a little lower. <laughs> what? Oh. That explains why the greeter at the hardware store asked me what kind of cock I needed before I even spoke. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, what kind of cock did you need? Silicone? <laughs> I didn't know they sold those. I usually get my silicone cocks at the Frost Palace. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> ah, C-A-U-L-K. You see it written out here. How is this amusing to you as a visual joke? It still makes me think of peepees. Yeah, but what doesn't? Uh, things that make me think of coochies. Obviously. <laughs> uh, can you stop thinking about peepees long enough for me to take us through this plan to save your dad? I've been working on it for days. <sighs> well, buddy, we recently shared a brain. Do you really think I'm capable of that? Uh, you know what? That's fair. Just do your best. So, uh, what holes were you trying to seal? <laughs> uh, I was trying to make sure I had an airtight seal on this well, the tangible, useful version of this, not the little drawing I did to add flavor to my presentation. Oh, did you need help finishing it? No, I, I was running behind what on... Saying, and I was it, and I was like, Peter Gallo... Rita, what are you saying to Keegan? She's giving me questions to ask you. So stuck in the shadow, you little fucking... Because she knows you were explaining everything as you worked the past few days. Stop, 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 stop talking, stop. But she had an earbud in most of the time, and she was watching the OC on her phone. Why are you doing this? And then she went on to say that she was working on a Peter Gallagher for the dreamscape, but uh, she's having trouble getting the eyebrows right. (sighs) Were there any other questions you'd like to ask me, Rita? Yes. Are they related to my presentation on how we're going to try to save your dad? No. Okay! This is a steamer trunk. Oh, it's the one that I barfed in. Your old coffee table. One and the same. It's my grandma's old steamer trunk. We already know it's magical. Rita found that out by getting stuck inside of it and barfing. You're welcome. So when I was hatching this plan, I searched through my grandma's blueprints in the Artificer Library. I found out how it works, and I've made some adjustments. This is going to help us take all the supplies we need into the dreamscape. I have my two thingamashits that Uncle Nate gave me, the little metal things I stick on Cabroncita and Obito to take them into the dreamscape, but I didn't have any way to take a whole shitload of stuff. We're going to be filling this baby up before we get there. I've read your grandma's journals. It's only unlockable by someone with a maker's eye. Yep, so if anything happens to me, you can still access it. Well, if anything happens to you? I mean, not necessarily anything sinister. I could just wake up in the middle of our plan. But that being said, one of the reasons I needed this trunk was for packing weapons. Carmilla can enter the dreamscape sometimes, and I think things have been a little distracting for her as of late, but we can't go in there unprepared. So, what's the cock for? (laughs) C-A-U-L-K. Rita! What? Keegan laughed too. I'm just a 21-year-old little guy. My brain isn't fully developed yet. (laughs) Can you believe this kid? Um, he's right, though. Mm-hmm. He's just a little guy, Rita. Uh, fine, fine, whatever. <laughs> I swear to God, you little fucker. The C-A-U-L-K was for making sure the trunk was fully sealed. It's old. I don't know that my mom was particularly concerned with magical upkeep. She'd stopped doing artificer stuff, and she was the one who'd used it as a coffee table first. Anyway, I found my grandma's notes, and I blended her spell ingredients into the sealant, and I sealed every hole and crack I found. I attached the thingamashits to the trunk itself, and I'm hoping the magic bubble it creates means everything inside of it should come to the dreamscape, too. At a minimum, if the stuff makes it with us and we have a run-in with Carmilla, I'm 100% sure that even if she absconded with it, she wouldn't be able to get it open. Why does it matter if Carmilla can open it or not? Oh, oh, because of the navigational tools you had me bring. Yes? Rita? Your hand is raised? Um, yes, thank you. Uh... I just wanted to ask a quick question, or or two. Proceed. First, what is happening? Uh, second, what navigational tools are you talking about? 
Also, can I put things in the box? Uh, three, I don't know what absconded means. Four, can I please have some fruit snacks? <sighs> okay, so one, we need to take a bunch of artificer stuff and my guns with us into the dreamscape. I'm bringing a lot of stuff just in case because I'm still kind of winging it on trying to get through to your dad. Two, she's talking about tools to navigate pocket dimensions. It's basically a portable version of what we used to find the workshop when we're in the ice cream truck. Also, no, you can't. Three wasn't phrased as a question, but abscond means to, like, escape secretly and in a hurry. And, and four... Ah, fuck. Oh, 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 yay! <laughs> <laughs> Those questions were delightfully on topic, and I appreciate it. Keep it up, and there are more fruit snacks where that came from. I know this is so fucking good. All right, so the trunk is ready? Yep. I ran behind, since my brain was a little fried after having Rita and Bertram up there for a day. Who the fuck is Bertram? The ghost, the ghost of, the Victorian of the Victorian rat, rat catching, catching boy. boy. Uh-huh. Naturally. After I took a day to recover, I hyper-focused on this plan for the next couple of days, and I think I have it all ready. Did you all get the mission itinerary I sent you? Yep. Yeah. No. Yeah, I didn't send you one. All you need to bring is yourself. Great. I've gotten more mushrooms from Hank to get y'all into the dreamscape, Viv and Keegan. Did you think of something you want to reach acceptance about or a resolution beforehand? Yeah, I wrote it in my journal and everything. I'm hoping writing it down helps it stick better. Ah, oh, shit. That's a good idea. Okay, Viv, go put the navigational tools in the trunk. Got it. Keegan, go put your Grandma Kiva's staff in the trunk. Gotcha. Rita, there's a bag of weed on your bed. I need you to smoke it as fast as you can and get super sleepy. I was born for this. Hey, Don. Should I take this badly photoshopped collage of Peter Gallagher pictures out of the trunk? Ugh. Put that back! That's important! I need that! I have to get the eyebrows right or he won't- Commercial break. Hey, little buddies, it's Brienne. Um, sorry for the smooth jazz voice. I'm getting over my first cold in four years, and my thrusty is not back up to full power yet, so you're getting smooth jazz, Brienne. Um, I just wanted to interrupt the episode to introduce what we're going to try to be doing from now on instead of, um, obviously not sponsored ads because we don't do that. Um, but we're going to start using this part of the show to signal boost uh, mutual aid requests for trans people trying to get to a safer place from a dangerous state. Um, Violet has created a Google form that I, that is linked in the show details, where if you or a trans person you know um, needs mutual aid and needs help um, being able to leave a dangerous place that they're in, um, you can apply to have their request signal boosted on the show. Um, we will be prioritizing BIPOC and disabled trans folks just because it is going to inherently be harder for them to get out of where they are because of the intersection of their identity. Um, and it's probably even more dangerous for them right now because of the intersections of their identity. Uh, but that if you are not BIPOC or disabled, um, that doesn't mean we won't do your request. We're just trying to triage things as it were um so yeah if you um want to check out the show details to see about applying for that um we would love to help um but our very first uh, mutual aid request um is josh um josh is dad to his trans son alex and they live in middle tennessee um Josh is a super cool metalhead dad who is super supportive of his son, Alex, who is 23. Um, they're both big geeks. They have three kitty cats, and Alex dreams of doing hair for a living someday. And if, you know, life can be a little less hectic, um, Alex is hoping to start cosmetology school this summer. Um... That is, if Tennessee, which I'm sure you all know is very scary for trans folks right now, um, is safe enough to do that. They're requesting mutual aid because Alex needs to pay back 
what they had to borrow so they could get his top surgery. Um, you know, they'd like to leave Tennessee, but until those medical bills are taken care of, they're kind of stuck. So anything over the $5,000 mark that they make, um, for paying for Alex top surgery will go towards helping them move to a different state. Um, probably somewhere in the Northeast, somewhere safer for Alex being a trans man and safer for his gender fluid partner who also lives with them. Um, so we will have links to Josh and Alex's, um, fundraising stuff and their social media. Um, and also, um, we also have a link on the show details to Alex's page where, um, he makes tales. I know we have a lot of furries who listen to this show and like, God bless you. Y'all are so sweet and supportive. Um, and Alex makes like bespoke custom tales. So if you would also like to support Alex's artistic endeavors, we'll have a link to that too. But we have a link in the show details to Josh's cash app. Um, and yeah, even if you can't, um, oh, we have a link to cash app and a GoFundMe link for Josh and Alex. Um, and even if you can't donate money, um, just signal boosting their request anywhere you can is helpful. I know I'm in some groups that'll have days where you can, you know, post mutual aid requests. And even if it's someone who doesn't listen to the podcast and you just want to take this info and spread it, that's the way we can help the most. So, um, we will have Josh and Alex's info in the show details. Um, and yeah, let's go help. Um, I know from personal experience that you little buddies are so generous and will do everything in your power to help someone. And I think we can spread that and help a lot of people in a time that looks pretty desperate. Um, but anyway, thank you, little buddies. Get back to the episode. Vicky sat with her legs crossed at the ankles. She nervously scraped the sole of one of her Mary Janes back and forth across one of the legs of her metal folding chair. At a large mahogany table about 10 feet away from her sat the parole board of the re-education camp. The board was comprised of three impending figures, a representative from a heavenly dimension, one from an adjacent hell dimension, and a representative from the organization that created the camp, the DMV. Oh no, it's Debbie. Poor Vicky has to talk to Debbie. All right, Vicky. We've heard from your character witnesses, your counselor, Dr. Glockenspiel, the entire security team here at the center. Yay, I love Vicky. Love if I have to tell you rowdy folks to settle down one more time, I'm kicking you out. You hear me? We love Vicky. But most importantly, we've heard from Martin Johansson, the Reeducation Center's parole coordinator, who's given us a full report on your behavior here and his opinions on you being released. Vicky! Yes, yes, Mrs. Deborah, your honor, Esquire. It's just Debbie. Yes, just Debbie. You have some time to give some closing statements during this hearing, and I'd better hear a more convincing alibi than I was... I was eating bread and butter pickles while being pleasured by two lizard demons as to how you couldn't be involved in Kyle's disappearance. But, but, say... Oh, sorry. Uh, so, lizard demons... Oh, you're gonna yard? You'd better not blow chunks. I don't know what that would even look like, given your weird, sibyl stomach. <clears throat> She's clearly nervous, Debra. Leonard, I don't want to hear anything from you. I don't even know why you're here. It was supposed to be Blagark and the Insatiable at this hearing. And you bailed on that DMV job I contracted out to you. Oh, quit sticking up for him, Metatron. But, but, but they're right. I, I did give the DMV a full report, and I even returned the advance I was given before my work began. It was all very above board. Blue Harkin came down with laryngitis and asked me to fill in. Oh, sure. He has laryngitis. And he happened to call you to fill in. 
He has four heads with four different larynxes. He's prone to it, Debbie. And I'll have you know, we were fraternity brothers at university. Uh, Metatron, Leonard was recently in close contact with Rita, who's been in cahoots with Kyle since the day she was made, and Vicky here was seen with... Martin is right. Martin is right. Martin, your time to talk is done. Yes, Metatron is in charge of Heavenly Records. They have all the paperwork for your hiring you. You're being extremely unprofessional, Deborah. Isn't it suspicious to you that they're both connected to Kyle? You... You really asked them to pork your butt? Debbie, seek help! I was inviting you to a barbecue. I wanted to share my Carolina-style pork butt. I, I, I don't know. In my line of work, Carolina-style involves completing a sudden sexual act whilst flying a plane and eating a Krispy Kreme donut. <coughs> oh, sweet Vicky, my apologies for Deborah. She has no respect for the judicial process. Would you care to give your closing statements? Yes, thank you, Metatron. This is a parole hearing, and you're no longer a person of interest in Kyle's escape. You've no obligation to speak about him in your closing statement. If Debbie would check her emails for once, she'd see the security team already confirmed your alibi for the time of his disappearance. We're loving Vicky! Vicky! How are you doing? Return my call, please, Vicky. Esteemed members of the parole board. And Debbie. Oh. I'll make this brief. As I had some dodgy potato salad for lunch, and it is not playing well with the two liters of Mountain Dew. I had with my breakfast. Oh, no. oh dear. Oh, okay. She's all right. Yes, I, I second that, Dr. Glockenspiel. If you need to excuse yourself at any point, please do. Thank you so much, your honorable horniness. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I know I don't have to address the disappearance of Kyle, but I'd like Debbie to start jumping up my ass about it, okay. so I will. Are you are, are, it has oh. been two months. Since that terrible bastard tried to kill me. Not a day goes by when I don't think about how that himbo twonk just... Vicky, sweetheart, are you all right? Uh, <laughs> My apologies, Mr. Leonard. Something in my tummy doesn't agree with me, but I shall prevail. All right, darling. Just please do let us know if you need a break. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Leonard. As I was saying, not a day goes by where I don't think about what that dramatic himbo twunk did. <laughs> he kidnapped me, and he made me help him open that portal. <laughs> Thank you, Melitron. My leash. It is dramatic, and it's hard to talk about. But I want Debbie to know that I don't have anything to hide. Oh, give me a gosh darn break. He made me open that portal. He threatened my life, saying he'd kill me and just crawl through my cummy portal himself if I wouldn't cooperate. <laughs> I told him it wouldn't work. I had to be alive. I told him that people couldn't fit inside my cummy portal and told him that I had to already <laughs> <laughs> Martin is right. 
You really don't have to prove anything to Debbie and re-traumatize yourself. We understand what happened. We've all read the report, except for Debbie. He made you open the portal. You bravely stopped him from escaping, though your life was in danger. The guards broke into the room, apprehending him. They put him in solitary confinement. They let you go back to your room. <laughs> Where I had the pickles and the freeway with the lizard demons. Yes, yes, all standard stuff. You were enjoying a casual evening in your room with friends, decompressing from the trauma you'd experienced earlier in the day when Kyle disappeared from solitary confinement. Really, Victoria, dear, you don't need to prove anything to us. You are really a hero, and your behavior and cooperation during the whole ordeal should be more evidence as to why you should be granted parole. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <sighs> okay. Suffice it to say, it's been two months since the disappearance of that dramatic, vain old queen. That's it. Son of a bitch. Do you need a moment, uh, Vicky, dear? Oh, son of a bitch. I'll be back in a sec. I got to sit real bad. I gotta sit real bad. I gotta go. Yeah, Vicky gotta ran out of the room and power walked down the hall. She clutched her stomach, desperately trying to reach the bathroom as quickly as she could, without drawing undue attention. She reached the bathroom and checked the stalls, making sure she was alone. When she saw that the room was clear, she locked the door. She didn't want anyone walking in. Soon after she locked the door, she. <laughs> oh, sir. Oh, sir. oh my God! Oh, Jesus. Fucking Christ! Her... <laughs> she... <laughs> she just projectile barfed an entire Kyle. You have got to stop kicking me any time I have to say something bitchy about you. I have to go back in there and finish. And I can't barf you up in the middle of my hearing. Oh! Oh! Are you uncomfortable? Not so much anymore now that I barf you up. I am covered in the Mountain Dew you had this morning. Oh, I felt like some of that went down the wrong pipe. Sometimes things go to my vortex and shatter my tummy. Yeah, Vicky, it happens a lot. You seem upset. It has been two months, Vicky! Yes, and I'm about to get you out of here. You just have to be cool for a little longer. I wouldn't have agreed to let you hide me in there if I knew it was two months until your parole hearing. Uh-huh, and what was your other option? Rita may be dead already. It's been so long. Time probably doesn't pass the same way here as it does on Earth. You don't know that. No, I don't. But I do know that we have to go back in there before they get suspicious. No. Get back to my coming. No. Kyle, no! Oh my. What a wet and sloppy mess we have here. Uh, I, uh... Oh no, uh, he... He came back. And he... Oh, he just pissed everywhere. Oh, uh, Please, Victoria. Uh, I'm an expert in bodily fluids. I know this isn't piss. Besides, I suspected you knew where he was, but uh, I didn't know he was inside you. <laughs> oh my god, please don't word it like that. So you gonna turn us in? Oh, I have forgotten to explain, haven't I? I'm here to help you. Why? Because I am here as a service to your statuesque progeny. What? Rita! Rita and Dawn are working on getting you out of here, and they requested my assistance. Here! Mm -hmm. What am I looking at? This will help them locate you, so they make sure that when they open a hole between this dimension and your pocket dimension, that hole opens as close to your precise location as possible. 
how is they going to do that when he's been hiding in my tummy? That's its own pocket dimension. I realize that. And that's why we need to finish your hearing as quickly as possible so we can get you out of here and get him out of your tummy. I'm already out of her tummy, though. You must return to her tummy. No. Do you want to get out of here or not? No. You don't want to get out of here? I mean no to going back in her tummy. It's awful in there. I'm pretty sure I saw Amelia Earhart. Oh, no. I forgot she was in there. Did she seem mad? Extremely. Well, you can keep Miss Earhart company for another few hours and return to the tummy vortex. No. Kyle. No. Let us save you. Oh, it smells like feet in there. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Get back in there. Stupid fucking bitch! Ah! Oh, what? Judith paced back and forth in the God Slayer's underground lair. Ollie, the tech expert, sat behind a desk with four computer monitors, sheepishly watching Judith. Several vampires stood in the room, looking at a scorched circle on the floor. They were in shock, seeing two pairs of badly burned combat boots in the middle of the circle, where two of their comrades had once stood. Yeah. Are you absolutely sure you followed the spell's instructions correctly? I did. Look, I did exactly what was written on the document in Carmilla's folder. This should have opened a portal to Ambrosio's hell dimension. I did it right. Please, I, I, Ollie, I did it Ollie, right. Ollie, 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 my friend, I'm not angry with you. It, you're not? <sighs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm truly sorry if it seemed that way. I'm just so angry we've lost two of our comrades, and I'm angry that I didn't anticipate my mother doing something like this in the first place. Something like this? She expected me to go through first. She expected me to be so eager to kill Ambrosio, I'd immediately use the information she gave us to try to go cut the bastard's head off. Oh, so that big tube of fire it made... That was intended for me. Our siblings there burned because my mother wanted to kill me. <sighs> they burned in that magical fire when it should have been me. You didn't know. Well, I should have known. I should have known she'd do something like this. It's not your fault. Well, it feels like my fault. What do you want to do now? Do you want to fall through on one of the threats we made her? We could kill Don Menendez. <sighs> no, I I don't think I will. I I think I'm going to use Menendez for the next part of my plan. What's that? What are you and Menendez going to do? My mum's hell-forged dagger is her means of getting to Ambrosio. Okay. Menendez is going to help me walk right into my mum's apartment, kill her, and take the dagger. Will she agree to that? Oh, she'd never agree to that. But if we can use some of the information you've been stealing from the Sanguis Magic Department, I bet we can trick her into agreeing to something else. What's that? A rescue mission. Rescuing who? Rita. <laughs> Hey, little buddies. Um, it's smooth jazz voice Brienne again. Um, if you didn't listen to the break mid-show, this is the only time I'm going to fucking shame you for not doing it. It's important now. Go listen to it, and you'll know why I have a smooth jazz voice, and you'll also hear some very important stuff about mutual aid we're going to be doing. But anyway, um, for the normal housekeeping session... Um, check out the episode details to see everyone's social media handles. You can find the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the handle at Lucky Winter Show. Um, if you want to help us out, um, sharing about the show on social media helps us a lot. Recommending it to people on social media 
helps us a lot. Um, we don't pay for ads, so every time you share about the show and tell a friend to listen, um, you help us out. Um, also, if you missed out on the pre-orders for the 30 Squirty and Vibing shirts, um, we have uh, more of those listed in the shop right now. So if you want to go support us and buy either, I think we have some Rita's Little Buddy shirts left, um, and we also have 30 Squirty and Vibing shirts so if you want to go support us and get some of those, those are on the site. Um, and yeah, just a reminder, on a personal note, me, Violet, and James are trying to haul ass to get out of Texas because things are very much not safe for us anymore. So any way you can support the show right now, it really matters and it really helps us a lot. And I have to say, since last episode, y'all are incredible because you really did show up, um, and sometimes I forget that I'm talking to a bunch of people and I'm not just recording into the void in my room. Um, so it's so strange to see real world action to something I've done. It's still kind of strange, but you all are the best and I love you so much. Um, but thank you for sharing about the show. Um, we're probably going to have a little longer break between seasons two and three just because we're going to be relocating. Um, yeah, um, this season's going to have 31 episodes, so that's going to give you an idea of about how much longer until the season ends. Um, I always like to tell you all ahead of time because I don't want you to be like, what? This next one's a season finale. Oh no. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so whether supporting a show looks like recommending it in a group that you're in, a Discord server you're in, sharing about it on social media... Um, or you can also support us on Patreon or buy me a coffee. Um, any bit helps. Um, and also, if you check out the show details, you'll find the links to our buy me a coffee and our Patreon. Um, when you support us on Patreon, you can get a cool shout out at certain levels, like our friends Randy Lovings, Rachel Rachelson, Sewing Seraph, B. Trostler, Kelly Brennan, Damon Faulkner, Smriti Singh, Lutzi, Helen Clifford, M. Mosin, and Fleetwood Max Expanse. God, I love our listeners. Um, anyway, that's it for us, little buddies. We'll be back with a new episode on April 15th. That's all I've got for y'all. Stay safe, and until next time, try not to die.